Hi, uh, Jim Lake here with the University of Illinois. Um, this will be the, the last uh, um, presentation on perspective uh, after I've done a number of uh, uh, mini lectures on uh, different aspects of the generation of uh, perspective projections, starting with um, planar projections uh, at the outset. As, as we progress, I'll move on now to uh, parallel projections. But just to finish up the, the topic of uh, perspective projections, I wanted to talk at least briefly about some of the variables that can be um, adjusted, tweaked, played with to, to receive, to obtain uh, different, uh, uh, different um, kinds of uh, perspective uh, views. So, the first one is that um, here we see a, a, a scene from above where we've got two different objects, two different enclosing boxes. They're both exactly the same size. Uh, and then we see a projection plane on edge and then the center of projection. So when we do the, you notice that the center of projection is directly in front of this object, whereas this one is off to the side. So when we actually do the, uh, the projection um, using the techniques that we've uh, described in previous lectures, the, the, this object will be projected here and this one here. And then when we actually complete the, uh, the, the representation, this is what uh, the, the, the two different projections will look like. So you see that either we can move the object side to side or we can move the center of projection side to side to get different, different effects. The next one shows, um, uh, we know we've seen that um, objects that are further away from the projection plane will appear smaller uh, when projected. So this illustrates um, that fact. Here we see the projection plane. The um, center of projection is not shown in this view, but I have three different uh, boxes, all identical in size, but a varying distance from the center of projection. So that when projected, you notice that the object that is closest to the uh, center of projection is largest when projected, and than the ones that are further back away from the projection plane when projected will be considerably smaller. So again, we can vary the distance from the center of projection to get uh, different size projections of objects. And then finally, I think we've seen this slide before, but this just shows that uh, by moving the projection plane, we can get different effects. Um, here I have the center of projection for a scene and this, this uh, teal colored uh, M-shape extrusion represents the object. Now if I have a projection plane that passes through that is coincident with that front face of the uh, M-shape, then the projection will look, will be ex the exact size and shape of the, the actual object. If, however, I move the projection plane, uh, uh, offset it, um, say behind the object, then when I project that M-shaped front face, I'm only projecting the front face here and not the entire object, then the, the projection will actually be larger than the, the actual object or the front face of the object. Likewise, if I move the projection plane so that it's in between the object and the center of projection when projected. The object will have the same shape as the object being projected, but the, uh, the size of it will be uh, uh, considerably smaller. And uh, even further, I can, these projectors, I can extend them infinitely, so there's no reason why I can't move the projection plane even behind the center of projection. And then when I carry out the, uh, the, the, the simple protocol or algorithm for generating these uh, uh, 
perspective projections, the image of that front face will actually be inverted. So these aren't all of the different variables, but at least there's uh, three of the different variables that can affect the, uh, the, the look and feel the, uh, of, of perspective projections. So this, this concludes the uh, discussion on, on perspective, and next time we'll move on to parallel projections. Thank you.